you. Thank you for your invitation to present. Unlike previous papers, this is a more light-hearted look at the semiconductor industry we are talking about. Is there anything else worth looking at on bare silicon wafers? The industry now is moving smaller and smaller. You know, we're going beyond, in fact, now we're up to the 17 nanometer node. So people are asking, hey, is there anything worth to inspect? People should be focusing on pattern wafers. Why are bare wafers interesting to people? But actually, my, what I've done is I've researched and I've done a lot of experiments and I've actually found that there's actually a lot of interesting things to be found on the wafer, which are defects. So, here I will just discuss what I've seen. I will not talk about root cause analysis. But it talks about what metrologies can be used and why there's an importance to do review after you've inspected the wafers. Today, we talk about macro inspection. But macro inspection actually gets smaller and smaller as we go down the technology nodes. Right? In the past, anything 10 microns is a macro defect. Now, one micron is a macro defect. Right? And one of the problems that we are seeing is that as we drill down to macro defect, is, ah, defect, defect, this is a defect, we actually miss out on the bigger picture. That, they are, that it may actually be much, much bigger than what we think it is. Scratches. Scratches is a very inherent problem as we move into the semiconductor these days, as we go into chemical mechanical polishing. So, what is a scratch? In many people's minds, a scratch is a long line across the wafer surface. But it's actually not. It's actually more like scallop surfaces across the wafers. Right. Where what we are seeing is actually ripping on the surface. So, are they detrimental to the chip? Will it fail? Many a time you just say, ah, oh, scratch, oh, okay. But, you know, many a times people don't take the effort to go and review it. As in, let's say, you know, use an AFM that says, okay, let's go in, take the measurements. The advantage of today's measurement of these defects is that you can create what you call a cloud file, meaning that you can identify where those defects are. And you can take it off the inspector into a review tool, whether you're doing a review SEM or even AFM in this case, where you can go back and review these defects and say, ha, ah, you know, what is it? So you're able to go back and do a re-inspection to quantify how deep, how wide, how much area was defective on the wafer itself. I'll just skip through this. Ah, so now, you know, we have things called ribbon defects. This is someone's hair or something else dropped on the wafers. Again, because when we do a defect scan, it's 2D. So it may not actually capture the whole entirety of the defect unless you go back in with a microscope or do reviews and say, hey, you know, are they something that will kill my device? Right. Lumps and bumps. Of course, many a times you find them, you've got particles falling down, and then just as part of the eco. But sometimes we have to think of it a bit differently. What is this particle? Is it a single element or a compound? Something else embedded itself? Whether the side walls or the chamber drop down? So that's, that's the importance of doing EDX to say, ah, you know, where did this particle come from? Sometimes it just comes off in the shower here, sometimes it comes off in the chamber, point onto the wafers, right? And thus contaminates the wafers. Again, the value of doing a 3D or 2D scan on an AFM. Some people use uh, optical prophetometry as well as a better advantage to do the scans. Then, we come to this thing called a cotton bud. And basically, I name them as I work. The cotton bud defect showcases a unique problem with defect inspectors. That it likes to measure things in the X, but not in the Y. So what happens now is that it quantifies this, oops, sorry, it quantifies this as a big defect. But because of how it looks at it, it says, ah, this is a small defect. 
So orientation defects also affect the eventual scans of the wafers. Silicon pillars. Again, we must think of defects these days as three-dimensional. They're not necessarily flat, per se. So you scan the wafers, and it says, oh, you know, I have a lot of defects. But then based on sizing, small. I'm not too worried. And then just send it on. Then you go in and say, ah, see, see, see. You know, I use a microscope. I look at it and say, hmm, you know, it's a nice round defect. Small, no problem. But it's only when you put it, then you say, hey, it actually a pillar with a dimple on top. So what the what the defector is looking at is a hey, dimple, but not the whole entirety of the structure. So again, the problem end of the day is this: Mr. Particle can topple over and becomes a large defect at the end of the day. So going to thermal oxides, you know, we now we have dark field inspectors. Yeah, dark field, bright field. So this is what I call the golf club effect. Again, what happens is that you have a golf ball, but you also have a long stick to go with it, that it can dislodge with subsequent defects. So, you know, it teed off, you know, and the golf club flew off. Again, this is a, def this is a critical killer defect that we have to be wary of. Rough substrates. Again, if we look in the industry, you know, we have very small substrates, but then we also have very rough substrates as well. The problem with rough substrates is when you do defect inspection, your threshold level is of concern to you. So it's like, let's say polysilicon. Polysilicon is usually very rough. So it's like, you're trying to look for a pebble on a sandy beach, right? So you have to be able to set a threshold realistically to be able to capture the effects. And having captured them, you must again review them to figure out what exactly you're looking at. Aluminum. Right. So many times we think of aluminum, oh, you know, we, we will focus on all the large defects. It's, oh, I got lumps, I got bumps. But then when you see all these uh, big fat columns, he says, well, you know, probably you can ascribe it to aluminum grain boundaries or small particles of no interest to us. Uh, but lo and behold, you have whiskers, a known problem in the industry. Again, they are three-dimensional and they're very tall. So the inspector says, see the tip and says, ah, small defect. But these will cause shorting, severe shorting on your devices. You know, look like body pops. Then we come back to bare silicon. What's interesting about bare silicon? Right? Bare silicon wafers are typically used for your test wafers and so on and so forth. So people will ask, hey, how many times can I reuse a bare wafer before I chunk it? Or send it for recycling, whatever. Most of the time, let's say a little, we just wash it off and da 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 da, go fresh wafer, it can continue. And so when you scan a detector, oh, clear, no problem. You see, no defects means the wafers is good. But this is truly the case. No. This, what I'm showing here is what we call the noise level of the wafers. That over time, with usage, you find that the surface condition changes, what we call the haze setting of the wafers change. Meaning that there is defectivity at a more macroscopic level rather than just a particle on the wafers. The morphology of the wafer has changed as you re recycle or rework them. So here is another interesting study we did. These are related to cleaning the wafers. Like, okay, clean the wafers. You have a few counts. But then, in the defector, there's defect script tools, you've got things called cluster defects. So, it means that a few wafers, I mean, a few defects come together and call it a cluster. Are they detrimental? Are they important? Let's see. Right. 
So you have this big fat blob there. Looks very innocent. It's very flat. Problem statement is that as you continue to process the wafer, it starts to peel. And we call them these sunflower defects. They're very beautiful to look at, but they start ripping apart as you process and becomes particular problems on the wafers. Slit lines. Slit lines are typical when you're doing high thermal work like diffusion or doing implantation wafers. Again, it's something that people know it's there, but is it important? It's only in recent days that with the new defect tools, you're able to actually capture all these slip lines on the wafer. These could be due to induced due to heat or during the processing or production of the wafer itself. With these slip lines, as you continue the process, these devices can and will fail, meaning that you can create cracks or dislocations of the electrons there. Again, this is what we call a haze map of the wafer. This was a different study that we are doing to say. We are looking at these are the injector points of the tool. So we are able to actually see the case actually clock, creating these images on the wafer. On a typical defect scan, you will not see it. But this is only at the noise level or case level of the wafer you can capture this information. Then we come to the next question people ask. We have now looked at the surface of the wafers. Okay, we know it's dirty. But is the edge important? Is there anything to be seen at the edge? Based on the semi definition, there actually are five zones that people look at. Many a times people just focus on the top surface or maybe the initial flange. But the tip of the wafers is also important as well because that also touches different parts of the process tool. So here we are reviewing the three zones, the top surface, A, and then the bottom surface. But we actually can see that there are defects over time that gets clogged there. Right. Worse still is the wafer notch. The wafer notch is actually a giant sized trap for all kinds of defects to get stuck there. The problem is that if you do not clean effectively, you will find that these will actually move up to the main chip and destroy it. So this is a, a defect, uh, the inspector that looks at all the five zones at any one time. So what it's showing is that actually at the bottom, you actually have defects. So the bottom line of my paper is this. That yes, it is important to look at bare wafers. It's important, even as we go down to smaller geometries, to inspect wafers. But at the same time, there's a need for us to do review. So what, and to look at what different types of review tools that we have here, review SAMs, optical profanetry, AFMs to go and quantify what those defects are and don't just believe the numbers those defect tools are coughing out at you. At the same time, the wafer edge, as we go down to smaller geometries, is of criticality for us to inspect as well. Thank you for your time. Any questions at this time? Yes? Well, may I know are most of your uh Wafer level defect are from the scan image. Say again? Uh, most of your wafer level defect images yes. are from the SAM or not? Uh, a good portion of what I do is on the SAM because that I'm able to quantify shape and size. But I also use just an optical micro microscopy to look at the wafers as well, depending on what, the, what I'm looking for. Okay. So uh, another question is about particle materials. I saw there is a page on that, which is, you say, based on the size, you can determine the particle materials, if it's a cluster or just a single particle. It is what the tool, basically the defect inspectors will say, okay, if I see within five or six particles in this area, it's called a cluster. But this is what we teach. You have to give the tool the intelligence to say whether this is a cluster effect or not. 
Now, what the material is requires a little bit more thought, be it knowing the process. At the same time, you may have to perform EDX to be able to quantify what that material was in the first place.